There were times when I'm out here and diagnosing a car, and I would love to show you exactly how it fails and when it fails. And then you do the stupid thing, and you unplug, and you check terminal tension, and you fix the car accidentally. So I came out here on this one. It's a 2010 Nissan Armada. It had a code C1178, which is for the active brake booster solenoid, um, or circuit, <laughs> which is kind of odd. Now, I'll go back in here right now, but I'm sure that I'm not going to find it. So let me go back. I will hit brakes down here. An anti-lock braking system. Now, sometimes when you go into these systems, you'll see that the lights come on. Don't be fooled. There it is, right there. Pops on just for a moment. That's normal operation. And as you get further in there and you're trying to do your testing, you'll find out the hard way that as you're doing this here and thinking that that code is there actively, it's really not. So when you come in here and read fault code, there's no DTC detected. Um, but I think this one was a very interesting operation and it was something I wanted you guys to see. As a matter of fact, that's... Hmm, let me try that again. Right now I have a lab scope hooked up to something and we'll go over this in a second, but I just want to see so that I don't have to go backwards here. If I hit read fault code, does it change operation? And yeah, just momentarily. And gives that little blip. No, no, no other change right now. Okay, so what is this system? What is this code? And if you come across it, what are you looking for? Now, I got to tell you, service information on this is absolutely lousy. I will pull up the code for you. As a matter of fact, I'll go right here. Codes C. And we're going to pull up our 1178, which we can actually type right in here C1178. And this is a very vague flow chart. It's not much to it. In this case here, yes, it was terminal tension, but um, if it wasn't, good luck. So the active brake booster consists of a vacuum booster, an active booster, and a delta stroke sensor. Well, that sounds great, right? So all this here is all wonderful information. Our 1178, which I'll zoom that in for you, this active booster solenoid is malfunctioning or signal line of the active booster servo is open or shorted. Okay, in my case here, it must have been an open circuit. Um, and again, I accidentally fixed this car by going in there and double checking the terminals in the very beginning. As you go through here, it says do the self-diagnosis results. They were using a consult on this one. Um, I'm not. I'm using the launch, so that option is actually not there. Uh, diagnosis procedure. The typical diagnosis procedure. This guy right here is going to be our active booster sensor. That's uh, one of the two. It has two of them on there. That will be a E49 and that will be the ABS control module up here. Um, so essentially they want to sit there and they want to ohm out the wires and make sure that the wires ohm out okay. Uh, you know that's I suppose that's one way of doing it but I'll tell you why that bothers me in a moment. Um, they want you to measure and make sure that nothing is being held down the ground. Is all that good? Yes, yes, yes. And of course they say, you know, make sure that everything is okay there. Now the interesting part in here is the inspection monitor. Now mind you, that was a solenoid code. But I want you to see, see will that allow me to zoom in? This is part of their testing. So there is a release switch NO data monitor and a release switch NC data monitor, which we can pull up here in the data stream. And we'll go selection from menu, just so we can limit it to what we're seeing. And release switch NC, which is normally closed and normally open. And we'll click on OK. And right now my foot is off of the brake, so normally closed is on, which makes sense, right? When we sit there and we step on the brake, normally open goes on, normally closed goes off. So we know that this is more than likely going to be either two-way switch or two separate switches. I will show you the wiring diagram so you can see what it looks like. And I don't mind telling you too, Erica, Erico and I were just sitting there in the middle of a chit chat when I got to this car and uh, we were both doing a little bit of research on this one because it seemed very interesting at the time. And of course, uh, 
that only lasted just as long as the uh, problem was still present. So that's one diagram and I'll go right into the one that we care about. Remember it was E49, I'll zoom that in for you. And first reactions, when you look at this active booster E49, that looks like a relay, doesn't it? It's not a relay. What this is here is going to be a dual throw switch. So one and two here will be the individual switch inputs. This will be your normally open and then your normally closed. And this right here is a solenoid, which essentially is really what a relay is. You know, on the inside there we have uh, something that's going to create a magnetism and do some type of work. So it is a solenoid. In this case here it's a solenoid that opens and closes something within the active booster. Um, I have absolutely no idea what that is. I started doing research and realized at that point they said, you know what, I'll learn this another day, and I will, I'll do the research afterwards, but this is what I care about. So I'm looking at my solenoid wire here, and this is what they were referencing. So these solenoid wires, simple enough, three and four, I go out there to the active booster, and I want to see what I actually have going on here. I assumed right away that I would have 12 volts coming out on one, and the other one would be grounded, when I stepped on the brake. I was wrong. And snap on decided to make the snow again, but I will pull that up on the screen and this is what we have. So this is with no brake operation. Whatever it does there with that valve clearly changes on and off. And stepping on the brake multiple times, the only thing you'll notice is a little bit more frequency here and there of that individual pulse there where they come out. Now I've zoomed that in, I've looked at it, it is nothing more than what appears to be just a square wave. Um, current wise, it's extremely low. Um, I don't know what that process is. However, I do know that when I first did this, before I cleaned the terminals, I had originally back probed on there just to see what we had going, and I had nothing there. What I had was I had 12 volts on one line, and I had nothing on the other. So just in a quick circuit there. Clearly I, I know which terminal it was that I cleaned and which terminal it was that I must have pinched over just a little bit. Um, but this is what you should see. This right now is a very happy car. What that actually is, I do not know. What I can tell you though is that ohmmeter readings. Um, let's say that that very small amount of current, because this thing was pulling less than uh, I want to say it was less than 100, uh, about, about less, just under 100 milliamps. That little tiny bit of current that they have there, how do I determine that that wire is good enough just by doing an ohm test? You can't. It, obviously, if it flows current and it is a solenoid, we want to test it that way. Um, hooking up a test light on this, not going to happen. Unless you have a very, very low amperage test light, something that's like 50 milliamps. <laughs> Um, or you could do an LED test and, and you have an LED tester in there and have it flashing away. Um, but LED again, very, very low current. Um, not sure that that would be the most opportune way of testing it. Um, so lab scope for the win on this. Um, I tried, like I said, I had the, uh, had the current probe out and did all that testing there already. Um, initially, actually I started off by using my U-scope because I didn't feel like pulling everything else out and uh, having the one channel was more than sufficient at the time. So that's what I wanted to see. So I had current running there and then I decided to switch it over and back pro both wires, watch voltage. Also watch the switch inputs just to make sure that they made sense as to what it is here even though that was redundant. And uh, so that's what you're looking for. On an 1178, you want to see that stuff whatever that is, that pulse. <laughs> um, when that pulse is not present, that's when you're going to get that other code there, that, that, that 1178. Now I will tell you this, and I've done this, and I don't mind being the guy to say it to you. If you decide that you want to use something that pulls a little bit of current, and you decided to touch either one of those two wires with one of these afterwards, um, while you're doing that testing there, if you wanted to see if that 12 volts could actually carry any current, you were going to get a code. That code is C1100. It says internal controller failure. That is not a controller failure. It just means that it didn't like the operation that was happening there, so it just assumes that the controller is bad. The, the code will clear. 
Um, so, <laughs> I, of course, I touched it here with the test light just to see whether or not it had any current. Uh, you know, if, if I could even use like a smaller bulb in my test light, and I popped that code and I said, uh oh. So, you know, sometimes we have to play and we have to learn things. Um, I have not seen a failure with this prior to, before, um, so it was news to me. Um, I am going to still do a little bit more playing around here and just learn a little bit on this car while I have it here and grab some data. I already have the scope out, so I'll be looking at the Delta Stroke Sensor. Um, this is a, let me grab my light here and I'll show you. Let's see, my light's still out there. Yes, it is. I didn't even show you guys where it is. So the E49 is on the bottom of the booster. As you can see, there's another one up top. Two pressure sensors up here. Another brake fluid level sensor there. ABS module there. And I was going to do my testing originally from the ABS module, but decided it would be much easier since this was down here. To just hop in and do what I had to do. Um, but they do work differently. They are not the same. Uh, one has the solenoid, one did not. But this is... Uh, this is a system I'm not altogether familiar with, so as I learn it, you know, people ask me, like, how do you get all this information, where do you get it from, and how do you memorize it all? I don't. I play. I test. I go out there, I read what service information I can, and, and do the best with what they offer. You know, th there really is not very much in there on the lines of uh, description and operation that was very helpful in this. So, anyhow, um, there was a bulletin in here. Just to show you this, if it's still there, no, I think I got it out of Identifix. Um, either which way, though, there was a bulletin that was in there for uh, for a uh, alternator also causing noise and, and can interfere with that active brake booster and set some other codes. Um, if you ever need, if you ever encounter that, though, it's there. I don't know why it's not in all data, but it was in Identifix. Um, but anyhow, that's what I have right now. I, I you know, if I if I've misdiagnosed this, which I'm pretty darn sure I have not, I will let you guys know. Like, see EBD. What's EBD? I don't know. I can tell you EBD is going to tell me that my active booster is down here, E49. Well, there you go. There's a picture of it. Number three in that picture. So let's pull up that picture. Not that you haven't already seen it with your own eyes. But there's number three showing it at the bottom of the booster right there and then the other one that was above that was number two which number two was the delta stroke sensor so like I said I'll have a little bit of uh, playing around to do here and um, in the meantime though unfortunately the car is already fixed and it was just really a terminal contact issue and just keep your eye open for that all right have a good night